morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Ignite. Good morning to this prayer hour um, from 6 to 7 a.m. Every weekday morning, we come together as a church just to pray, to encourage one another, to share testimonies, to trade prayer burdens, and to uphold one another. I pray that this will be a time of refiring for you retooling for you, that you will catch a fresh inspiration this morning and that you will run with that inspiration. If you're joining us on MixLR this morning, I extend a warm welcome to you. If you're joining us on YouTube, good morning, great morning, beautiful morning, joyful morning, triumphant morning. Hallelujah. If you're here at um, the Zoom, in the Zoom experience, welcome, good morning. You're welcome to Ignite today. My prayer is that you've come to meet God. He has come to meet you. There will be an intermingling this morning and you will not go the way that you came. In Jesus' mighty name. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Such a delight to see you here. It's such a privilege to have this opportunity just to share with you this morning. Amazing. We're just going to get right on it this morning. If you have a testimony that you would like to share with us, please, please, please go ahead and type it. Um, YouTube family, please go ahead, share your testimony. Um, YouTube uh, mentioned MixLR, share your testimony with us, please. Someone is waiting to hear about the amazing things that God is doing in your life. Someone is waiting to hear your own journey of faith, walking with God and how, you know, he's just making things um, work for you so that they can be encouraged themselves to believe that, um, you know, they have a stick, <laughs> they have a portion and their testimony is next in line. So please share your testimony with us. Just caption it testimony. If you put that up there, testimony, I'll be able to see it and share it with God's people this morning. Put it in the comment section. Just put it up in any, any um, you know, option that's available to you, whether in the comments, you know, whatever it may be, the Q&A, please go ahead and share your testimony. And I know God will bless you for doing so. Um, YouTube, YouTube, I'm checking very quickly this morning. YouTube, do we have YouTube up? Beautiful, we do. Amazing. We do have YouTube up, up and online. Beautiful, beautiful. Amazing. Now, you know, we love to start um, our conversations this morning, um, these in night mornings, just thanking God blessing the name of the Lord, giving him praise, giving him glory. So can I invite you this morning, before you even launch into a song, before you even lift up, you know, a tune, can you release a word of thanksgiving to God from your heart today? I know some mornings you get up and it just feels like, you know, wires are touching in the wrong way. And it almost feels like it's a struggle to find, you know, those words. But I want to ask you this morning, find them. Find them. If all you can say this morning is thank you, God. Thank you for breath. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Please release that sound to God this morning. Say thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for counting me worthy to be among the living. Hezekiah said something very powerful, very powerful. And every time I think about it, you know, it always amazes me. It says the grave cannot praise you, only the living. Only the living can praise you. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father, Lord, this life you've given me, this breath you've given me, it will praise you. This breath that you have invested in me, God, it will return to you as praise. If all I can do this morning is to breathe out, thank you, thank you. Father, I thank you. God, you are worthy. That's what I will do today. I will praise you. The enemy cannot have the final say concerning me. I will always praise you. <laughs> and I will not be silent. I will always worship you. Can you lift your voice and sing? <laughs> and I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as as long as i am breathing 
I will always worship you. <laughs> hey. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. See, it's a choice you are making this morning. I will, I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as I am breathing, as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Now someone say, here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. God, we bring our worship. <laughs> we bring a sacrifice of praise for someone this morning. It truly is a sacrifice. Lord, because um, this morning, um, you know, the enemy may have tried to convince them, Lord, that there's, there, there's no point. Um, asking them questions. Why, 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 why are you still holding on? Why are you believing this God? But Father, Lord, they've chosen to defy every voice of opposition. They've literally chosen to defy the voice of Goliath this morning. And they insist, oh God, that they will bring worship. We insist today, Lord, we will bring worship into your presence. We'll bring worship into your presence. We will thank you for your goodness. We will thank you for your love. We will thank you for your... For, for your magnificent love, oh God. Today, Lord, we choose to bless you, to praise you, to lift you, to honor you, oh God. And we ask God, let this delight your heart. Let our worship delight your hearts today. As we come before you today with our thanks, with our praise, with our worship, we ask, Father, that this will delight your heart. We bring an offering into your presence. We ask, Lord, let it be a sweet smelling savor to you. Let it delight your heart, oh Father. Look, the, the works you've made, the people you have created, we have come to say you are God and you are God eternal. You are God forever. Ah, you are God, you are king. You are mighty, oh God. And you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh mighty God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord, so worthy, God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, almighty God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord, so worthy, God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, almighty God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are excellent, Lord. You are beautiful, God. You are holy, God. Come on, someone. You can sing a new song. It doesn't have to be a song that anyone else has written. You can go ahead and and say, you are wonderful, God. You are glorious, God. You are mighty, God. You are a holy God. That's why we worship you. There is nobody like you, nobody like you. Come on, release your own song of praise today. It's okay to just say, Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are glorious. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for being faithful day in, day out. Ever faithful, ever loving, always kind. You are good and your mercy is forever. Lord, we lift you up in this place. As we gather together, 
from near and far, oh God, we gather together, you know, across many different platforms, across Zoom, across YouTube, you know, MixLR, we gather, Lord, from near and from far, just to say, oh God, how beautiful you are, how wonderful you are, how sweet you are, how amazing you are. Father, Lord, we account you faithful today and we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for life. Thank you for breath. Thank you for the privilege to come before a mighty God, an amazing God, a wonderful God. We say, God, today as we pray in your presence, as we worship, as we share burdens, prayer burdens, we ask, Father, Lord, that you will incline your ear towards us. And not just that you will incline your ear towards us, Father, Lord. We know, God, that you hear our prayers and that you will receive the petitions that we bring to you. For someone this morning, oh God, let there be an ignition point. For someone, oh God, who knows they are trusting you for something and maybe they don't even know exactly what it is. They just come this morning with an expectation, oh God, I ask that you will meet them in that place with even much more than they expect. Father, touch someone, heal someone, deliver someone. Huh? Lord, give someone, Lord, the blueprints for the next season of life, Father, that they may walk in it and praise and glory will return to you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Am I hearing someone say an amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, my Father. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We give you praise, we give you praise, we give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome again. Welcome again. Welcome again. We're just going to launch right out today on Ignite. Yesterday, we started um, along a line of prayer. and We're just going to jump right in and we're going to get on it. We're going to share just for a brief moment and then we're going to pray. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. Paul was writing to his spiritual son, Timothy, and he says this. This charge I commit to you, son, Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage a good warfare. I love that. I love that. Paul was writing to his son, Timothy, in this book, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. He says, I'm committing this charge to you, my son, Timothy, according, that means it lines up with all the prophecies that have gone ahead about you. That means there have been words spoken over Timothy. There has been words spoken concerning Timothy, prophesying what kind of life and ministry, you know, and testimony that Timothy was going to have. And Paul is saying that, look, I am committing this charge to you and it is in accordance with the prophecies that have gone on concerning you. And the reason why I'm committing this charge to you is so that you can wage a good warfare. I love it. He said you can wage a good warfare. And someone may ask the question this morning, what is a good warfare? What is a good warfare? Do you have an idea? What, in your opinion, what is a good warfare? Right. As I considered this scripture and I meditated on it all, you know, for, you know, for some time yesterday, what I could conclude was that a good warfare is one in which you already know the outcome before you even engage the battle. Number one, you already know the outcome because the outcome has already been prophesied. Now, not only do you know the outcome already, but you already know that the one who is leading you through the battle is a champion, undefeated, <laughs> undefeated. He has been undefeated from the beginning and he will never lose a battle, not concerning you, not concerning me. So I said a good warfare is what? One, that you already know the end of the battle from before you even engage in the battle. Number two, the champion of the battle, the one who has already won the battle is the one going ahead of you. That is a good warfare. I don't know about you, but that is a good warfare. But, but how do you wage a good warfare? How do you go into a good warfare? How do you wage a good warfare? You go with the words that have been prophesied concerning you. You go with the words that God has spoken concerning you in the scriptures. Hallelujah. You know, when you go into God's word, God's word, the Bible, is a book 
of prophecy, right? It's a book of testimony. It's a book that tells you what has been spoken already concerning you and how you and I ought to posture in the light of what God has done for us. Hallelujah. So you can take this word, you can take these scriptures, you can take these promises and you can wage a good warfare. And as you pray, as you spend time with God, there will be words spoken to your spirit, words ignited in your spirit that will also help you wage a good warfare. Just to make it practical for someone this morning, let me tell you about a time my husband and I, you know, were believing and trusting God concerning a matter and we had to wage a good warfare. You know, many years ago when my husband and I got married, you know, we were literally starting from scratch. We were starting from scratch. Um, before we got married, we had managed to put money together to pay the rent for the house we were going to live in. You know, so we were excited at least we had a place to live. You know, but we began to make a list. What are the things we thought we would need, you know, to furnish our house with? We said, okay, at least we need furniture. We need a, you know, setting maybe for the sitting room. We need a bed, you know, for the bedroom. We need a cooker. You know, we need pots. We need plates. You know, the basic things. We needed even curtains, right? To even cover the windows, you know, so that we would have some privacy. We wrote everything down. Everything we thought we would need, we wrote it down. By the time we sat down and did estimates for that list, it looked like money that was a little out of our reach. But we had learned how to trust God. And we started out just praying that, you know what, God, we don't know how you're going to do it, but we know you're going to give us every good thing in Christ Jesus and we rest in you. So we kept speaking it. God is going to provide more than enough for us. We know we knew what we needed. We, in fact, that list of things we needed, we put it up on our wall. We pasted it up on our wall so that it would be a contact, right? A faith contact, something we could be looking at something we could see every day. It's reminding us that this is what we're believing God for. This is what we're trusting God for. The warfare had begun. This is what we're believing God for. This is what we want to see manifested. But one day I remember I was just going, you know, in my personal time of devotion, I got to a scripture that I had read many times before. I don't know how many times I'd read this scripture, but it's the book of Proverbs chapter 24, verse three. Many of us will know the scripture. Proverbs 24 and verse 3 says, through wisdom, a house is built and by understanding it is established. Verse 4 says, by knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. And, you know, it's a scripture I'd read before. It had never occurred to me to apply it in warfare about the things we were trusting God for, for our home as a young couple. But suddenly in that place of, of just studying the word, it just ignited in my spirit. The Bible, I mean, God was like, look at it. It said a, wist, a, a house is built by wisdom. You are building a new house. The, Akinla, the Godman and Bolarin were Akinlabi household. He said, ask for the wisdom that builds a household, that builds a posterity, that builds a, an everlasting name. Ask for that wisdom. And he said, by understanding, the house is established. Ask for the understanding that builds a home beyond just the physical things that you have put on the wall and you are believing God for. Ask that in the spiritual, your home and your house is built and established. He said, aha, we're going somewhere. He said, by knowledge, the rooms are filled with every precious and pleasant riches. It means the cooker I was believing God for, the pot I was believing God for, the furniture I was believing God for. He said, by knowledge, the rooms are filled. I said, wow, you mean by knowledge, this house can be filled. The rooms in this house can be filled with every pleasant and precious riches. I said, wow, it was ignited in my spirit. And I began to war a good warfare. As I'm coming home, you know, someone had told us very early that even if you don't have the money to fill your house with furniture, just buy curtains. You are your house, your husband, you are in your house, you are okay. You are believing God for what you are believing God for. It's nobody's business what is in there yet. You are calling things into being. And that's exactly what we were doing. As we go out in the morning, we take a look at our list and we put up on the list Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. By wisdom, this house has been built. By understanding, this house is established. By the reason of knowledge, 
every room in this house. We would go into the rooms of the house and we would declare, this room that looks empty, you are filled with every pleasant and precious riches in Christ Jesus. And we would prophesy and declare to the rooms of our houses what looked like empty space, what looked like nothing, nothing. In the physical, it looked like nothing. We were declaring and we were prophesying. We were warring a good warfare. I tell you that by the grace of God, by the goodness of God, everything we trusted God for, it materialized. Either by someone just calling us and saying, oh, you know what? I have this set of furniture I'm no longer using. Do you mind? Can I give you? Mind. How can we mind? Please bring it quickly. Happily, we received it. Our rooms were being filled with every precious and pleasant thing. We began to receive wisdom from God on how to manage our resources well, how to keep something aside, how to put things aside so that we could begin to do the things that we had believed God for in that house. You know, one thing we had written on that our list that was a huge step of faith. We said in this, this year of our marriage, we want to move into our own house. It was an audacious statement. It was a bold statement of faith. At the time, the things on the physical didn't seem to align, but we wrote it there. We put it there as a faith project. As we're believing God for this home to be built, we're believing God for the next home that God would do it. And I tell you, we ward a good warfare. I want to challenge someone this morning. What is it that looks like it hasn't yet materialized on the physical? Is it matters of character? Is it matters concerning your ministry? Is it something that you have believed God for concerning your child, concerning a spouse? Maybe you've been believing God for the fruit of the womb and it looks like this thing has not yet happened. Look at me. I tell you, Hannah wore a good warfare. The Bible tells us her story in 1 Samuel chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Hannah wore a good warfare. She got into God's presence. She was praying and the Bible says that her lips were just moving because of the anguish in her soul. But she had determined that it is in God's presence I will receive what I'm believing God for. I'm not going to go out there to places where there's not a solution. I'm going to receive it first from God's presence. I'm going to receive it first from God's hand. If God cannot do it, let it remain undone in my life. But I know that this God I serve is a prayer answering God. He's a faithful God. He's able to do much more than I can ask, think, or imagine. So I'm going to incline my face to him. See, she warred a good warfare. Even when Eli the prophet came to antagonize her, she knew what she was about. She understood that a good warfare is not really about people. Because I'm trusting God and believing God for something is no reason to turn into a cantankerous, un you know, un unpleasant person. She did visit the prophet um, Eli with her, you know, with her, you know, because she was sad. Everybody around me must be sad. No, she took the time to explain to him, prophet, no, I'm not a drunken woman. I've come here with a petition. I've come here with a burden. What is the burden upon your heart? What is the burden upon your heart this morning? I want to ask you this morning, can you bring that burden to God and let God breathe upon that burden? Hannah came into God's presence, trusting God for a child, all right. But in that place where she was praying, she, she, she traded in her burden for the burden of the Lord. Ah, we're going to read that scripture this morning. It, it came to me by a wave of inspiration, but I believe we're going to read that scripture as we go ahead and pray this morning. She came into God's presence saying, look, I want a child. I want a child. But somewhere in the middle of praying, her prayer language began to change. You know what, God? I'm going to give you this boy. I know I want a son. If you give me a son, I give him to you all the days of your life. You may be, you, I may be asking you for a son, but God, I'm giving him back to you. Let him be your prophet. Let him be yours. Someone this morning, you receive grace to trade in your own burden for God's own burden. Ah, God could use what Hannah brought into his presence. And we know that her story didn't end there. She had a son just as she had asked from the Lord. And as she gave this son to the Lord, God returned to her five more abundant testimonies of her time in his presence. Hallelujah. 
what did I say? A good warfare is one that you know the end already from the beginning because you have been given the prophecies. The second, I, the second feature of a good warfare is that the one who is fighting the battle is going with you. The champion is going into the battle with you. Hallelujah. Is someone ready this morning to engage with our champion this morning to war a good warfare, to declare what God's word has said concerning you, to call the battle victorious, triumphant to declare that the God who I serve is both able, capable, and faithful, and he will be faithful to the end. Can you lift up your voice and begin to declare this morning? Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, because we know that we are warring a good warfare. We are engaging with the champion. Hallelujah. The God of angel armies is in the battle with us. He's right there. He's holding your hand. He's the vanguard and champion of this battle. And he has gone ahead of you. He has made crooked paths straight. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, because for every burden, oh God, that has come into your presence today, we know, oh God, that these possibilities can come a reality in your presence. So today, God, we, 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 we make a commitment to war a good warfare. We will war a good warfare in your presence today. We will war a good warfare in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Can you open with me to the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8? I love Joshua verse chapter 1 and verse 8. It tells us a strategy for this warfare. Joshua 1 and verse 8. If you know it, if you know it, you can say it, speak it and declare it aloud. Open your Bibles, check the scripture. It's an amazing template for a good warfare. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night so that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. That's a template for a good warfare. It says this book of the Lord, the, the words that God has spoken concerning you, put them in your mouth, put them in your heart, meditate on them, observe to do according to all that is written in it, and then you will have good success. Is there someone trusting God for good success? Good success in your marriage, good success for your children, good success in any area of life. Can you lift up your voice and declare <laughs> the book, this, this word of the Lord will not depart from my mouth. Can you speak it and declare, <clears throat> excuse me, what are those words of prophecy that God has said concerning you? If you can't think of any specific prophecy this morning, put pressure on the word. God's word says that you are healed. God's word says that you are whole. God's word says that you have a sound mind. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Can you speak that in his presence this morning and go to war with these words of prophecy? I thought, Lord, I thank you. I have a sound mind. I know God that worry tried to come against me yesterday. Anxiety tried to pitch a tent against me yesterday. But I thank you for your precious promises for me that says that I have a sound mind mind. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I possess a sound mind. I walk in a sound mind. I speak from a sound mind. I operate out of the soundness of mind that you have given me. And because I have a sound mind, oh God, I stand to declare today, oh God, that lines are falling to me in pleasant places. I have a good inheritance. My, my steps are ordered by you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I declare that today, oh God, this is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. There's a, there's a rich portion of joy reserved for me today because your word has declared it. And today, Father Lord, I, I wore a good warfare according to the prophecies that have gone concerning me. Your word concerning me is life. And I walk in the light of that life. For someone this morning, you want to put pressure on Isaiah 60. That is our word as a church for unusual elevation. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You know, there's a way the enemy tries to posture it and make it look like, look, this word may be for others, but you, you know your own, you know, you have no portion there. 
it is your job to war a good warfare. Take the posture that David took when he arrived at that battlefront and heard Goliath saying all kinds of nonsense about the army of Israel. David had to insist, I'm not going to be like the crowd. A thousand may believe what Goliath says, but I have a different spirit on my inside. And I insist that this uncircumcised Philistine cannot defy the armies of God. And he began to make a bold declaration. I will feed your head to the birds of the air. Someone, you need to look that challenge in the face and make some bold declarations. Someone is telling you that, look, you know what? You've waited for God enough. Maybe it's time to be a second wife, a third wife. Just manage what is available. And you know, you know, you know that God told you that your portion, no one will take. War a good warfare this morning and speak to your spirit insist her that God has said that even if you have to call him from a far country, he will call him who will execute his counsel. You have no reason to fret. You have no reason to, to run out of God's presence. Ah, insist this morning. I wore a good warfare. Someone is trusting God and believing God for boldness to declare his word, boldness to speak in, in you know, in places where you may have been intimidated. Place boldness to speak God's word, to, to represent Jesus well. Can you declare, speak over your feet? The Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of those who carry the good news. Speak over your feet this morning. War a good warfare. My feet are beautiful. I carry a message of life. I carry a message of, of, of hope. I carry a message that will liberate everyone in my environment. Huh? My lips huh? carry messages of grace. When I speak, oh God, wisdom will pour forth from my lips huh? like apples of gold in pictures of silver. That is how my words will be to the hearers in the name of Jesus. For someone who may have encountered a failed transaction yesterday. And maybe the enemy is trying to tell you that maybe this may be the end of that business. And you know what God told you. You are confident of what God told you. Can you worry good warfare this morning and declare that the noise of this business will be carried far and near her? Oh, that it will, it will break every boundary. It will be a kingdom testimony in the name of Jesus. Can you speak and declare? What is it? What is it? What is it that the enemy may have been trying to say to you in the past week? This morning, I want you to war a good warfare. Years ago, I remember I was looking for a help, someone to help me in the house, a domestic, you know, um, you know, staff. And I, it looked desperate. It looked like everyone, I mean, back to back, two, three of them back to back, it was just a sad, painful story. I turned my face to the wall like Hezekiah and the scripture Isaiah um, Psalm 121 just rose up in my spirit. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. And I began to declare, Lord, my help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. I ward a good warfare. I, I knew that I'm putting pressure on this word. I will not get help just from a human being. Father, I receive my help from your hand. And the Lord truly provided a help. I don't know what it is and what area of life it is that you're trusting God for this morning. The Bible says you can war a good warfare by reason of the prophecies that have gone concerning you, by reason of the precious promises that God has given you. This morning, it's too early to give up. It's too early to be despondent. It's too early to think, look, this can no longer happen for me. I want you to put pressure on God's word this morning and declare, this is my portion in Christ. This is my allotment in Christ. I receive the victory. I insist that I have the victory in Jesus' matchless name. Amen and amen. Is someone saying amen this morning? Amen and amen. I'm going to give you another two minutes to just go ahead and declare. This morning, Lord, we declare, ah, we will make our way prosperous and we will have good success for every burden that your sons and your daughters may have carried this long. Maybe someone is having an interesting time in their office. There's a boss that has been antagonizing you. There's just a situation that has refused to be resolved. Can you declare this morning, Father, I wore a good warfare. I wore a good warfare. I wore a good warfare. 
instead of me to be despondent, instead of me to feel sad and gloomy about the situation. This morning, we declare 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 over every situation. Huh? We declare, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Ha! Huh? Can you declare, even in that office, I carry the fragrance fragrance of Christ is not a defeated fragrance. The fragrance of Christ is not a, a defeated fragrance. That's the word. But the fragrance of Christ carries, carries the fragrance of life the fragrance of healing, the fragrance of joy. This morning, someone, you need to insist, I carry my joy with me. I insist, I carry my joy with me everywhere I go. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord gives me energy, energy in the name of Jesus. Nothing steals my joy. With this joy, I will draw from the wells of salvation. Salvation. Someone put pressure on God's word this morning in that place that looked like it had been dry, that looked like things were not moving forward. Can you just insist the joy of the Lord is my strength? And I declare that joy lives here. Joy abounds here. Joy multiplies here. Joy is a joy takeover in my environment. In the name of Jesus, I put on a garment of praise and I shake off every every cloud of heaviness this morning. I insist that joy, it's a joy takeover in my environment. It's a joy takeover in my environment. It's a joy takeover. Joy overtakes, overruns, and overrules every despondency in the name of Jesus. Concerning my children, I speak joy. Concerning my husband, concerning my wife, you declare over your environment and over your territory. I am Enforce the joy of the Lord, the force field of joy. I enforce the field of joy in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, someone insists. In the name of Jesus. Joy lives here. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm also mindful of the fact that, you know, it occurs sometimes that, you know, um, you're carrying a burden. You're carrying a prayer. Thank God for Hannah. The Bible says that Hannah, she took her burden into God's presence. It was Shiloh and she took her burden into God's presence. And even when the man of God, Eli, you know, was trying to antagonize her, she kept her focus. I'm here for something important. Don't distract me, man of God. If it's your spouse, don't distract me, spouse. I'm here for serious business. I've come with a burden and I've come to, to intermingle with the one with whom I have to do. You know, but sometimes, you know, you and I can agree that there are times we get distracted. Thank God for Hannah. She didn't get distracted in that instance. But there are times we know that things can distract us and shift us off course. It's kind of like Moses. We know Moses, you know, was miraculously saved in Egypt when all the young boys his age were killed. So he knew he was a deliverer, but somehow he found himself in the backside of the wilderness tending sheep. What should have been a deliverer of a whole nation was tending sheep in the backside of the wilderness. And it took a burning bush experience to, to bring him back on course. We see that story in first, um, in Exodus, excuse me, Exodus chapter one, chapter two. And then in chapter three, we see Moses at the burning bush. There was an encounter. A bush was burning and it was not consumed. And because of this sight, Moses turned aside to see what was happening and God got his attention. This morning, I don't know where it is you may be on your journey. Maybe you're in need of a reignition. Can you ask, Father, give me a burning bush experience. Give me a burning bush experience. There may be encounters you remember from days gone by, things that you know that God had said to you years ago, but you know, it just feels like they're so far away. Will someone dare this morning to ask, Father, in your presence this morning, I ask for a burning bush experience, for a fresh burden, for a renewed understanding of what I am here for and how I'm to engage with you. The Bible says that Moses turned aside to this bush to see what was happening. 
The bush was burning and it was not consumed. The bush was burning and it was not consumed. Exodus 3 and, you know, um, from verse 1, the Bible says, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father, father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert until he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush does not burn. For someone this morning, there is a why that, it, that will bring you into the center of what God has for you. There is a why that will draw you deeper into what God has for you. A burning bush experience that will deliver into your hands the next course of your life, the next phase of your life in Jesus' mighty name. Verse 4 says, when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to look, then God called to him, from the midst of the bush. Can you lift up your voice and declare, Father, you will get my attention in this season. In this season, Lord, you will get my attention. I will put aside every distraction. I will put aside the things that get in the way of our fellowship. That will get in the way of our, you know, of our intermingling, oh God, and you will get my attention. Can you lift up your voice and declare, God, in this season, you will get my attention. You will be the center of my focus. You will be the center of my attention in this season. It may feel, Lord, like there are a thousand distractions on the left, another 1,000 on the, on the right, but God, you will get my attention. Can you declare that now? Father, you will get my attention. No distraction, no giant, nothing, Father Lord, in this age or in the age to come will take me away from you. Father, Lord, you will get my attention. You will get my attention. My eyes are focused on you. My eyes are trained on you. I will hear your voice. Give me a burning bush experience, something that will reignite my joy, reignite my passion, reignite my commitment to follow through on your promises in the name of Jesus. Is someone asking for a burning bush experience this morning? Is someone asking, Father Lord, reignite a fire on my inside. Bring me into the center of your plan. Bring me into the center of your purpose. Bring me, Lord, into the center of what has been declared concerning me. In the name of Jesus. You see, Moses had been set apart. He had been delivered from the very start of his life. But here he was in the back of the wilderness, in the back of the desert. Someone may feel this morning that you are so far off course. You don't know what can help you get back into the center of what God had said concerning you. See, there was a Joseph. There was a Joseph that had a dream. And for as much as it felt like they were selling him far from the dream, God ignited, God engineered those circumstances to plant Joseph right in the middle of where he wanted him to be. So this morning, I want you to lift up your voice and declare, Father, give me a burning bush experience. Help me, Father Lord, to dimension where I am where I am going, where you are leading me, Father Lord, huh? so that I can war a good warfare, ah, so I can have the right disposition to the happenings of my life in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will get my attention in this season. I will not be distracted. I will not lose focus. I will train my attention on you. I will fix my gaze upon you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, the Exponential Conference started yesterday. I know many of us have been following very closely and I know that God has been, you know, God has been doing amazing things in your life. Can we go ahead and just give God thanks for day one? Day one yesterday was an amazing encounter. Can we give God thanks for all the words that were spoken, for all the ministries that are represented at the Exponential Conference? 
you know, 18 viewing centers around Nigeria, so many delegates in the room with us yesterday and from across the world, the people who traveled from near and from far, from countries and continents far and near, from all across Africa, from all across the world. Can we just give God thanks for safety and preservation? Can we just give God glory and honor? Father, thank you for what you are doing with the Exponential Conference. Thank you for what you are doing in the life of your church. You will use the Exponential Conference, oh God, to ignite fresh passion fresh passion oh god in the name of jesus and can you just go ahead and sow a seed of prayer over day two day two as we get ready you know to just get things started in day two can you declare that every impediment every impediment will be rolled away and this is the way it occurs to me when jesus came to the graveside of lazarus in john 11 he lifted up his up his voice and he told them to roll away the stone right roll away the stone. And then he shouted, Lazarus, come forth. I want us to declare over every ministry that is facing some discouraging times right now, that they will hear the voice of the Lord, Lazarus, come forth. In every place where the church of God in Nigeria, in Africa, around the world needs to receive words of life, words of empowerment, words that get them on, get us on our feet and get us moving in the direction that God has for us. That we will hear the voice of the Lord come forth in the name of Jesus. Every impediment is rolled away. The grave clothes are torn away in the name of Jesus. The church of God in Christ arises to the measure of the stature of Christ in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you for the exponential conference. Thank you for all you will do in the midst of us. Thank you, Lord, for how you will lift, empower, anoint, reignite passions in the hearts of your men and your women, the men and women of God that you have called into this conference. Thank you, Father, Lord, because we receive a new lease, a new lease, a new lease of life in the name of Jesus. We also pray, Father Lord, for Nigeria as we go closer to our elections. We declare, Father Lord, that in these end days and in these end of times, Father Lord, in spite of the enemy's plans, oh God, your church, your church, your church will experience Goshen. We declare it by faith. We speak peace over our nation. We speak peace over our land. There will be preservation and safety for your sons and your daughters as they go out and as they come in. And you can go ahead and speak a word of prayer over your nation. If you're joining from anywhere around the world, please go ahead and speak a word of blessing over your nation. Declare that God, your peace, the peace of the Lord holds sway here. There was news of an earthquake yesterday in Turkey and a few other nations. Can we just go ahead and speak? God, in the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of all that is going on in our world, the Bible says wars and noise of wars, pestilence and all sorts of disasters. But he said, do not let your heart be troubled. Father, Lord, as the church of God in Christ, give us strength. Give us capacity, oh God. Give us, give us the understanding of what is going on in our world so that we can posture the right way. Ah, thank you for Goshen concerning the people of God. We will come back. Lord, every day and in every season, Lord, we will come back with testimonies of your goodness, testimonies of your covering, testimonies of your love to the praise and to the glory of your name. Is someone saying an amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and praise. Now, a few people have shared their testimonies with us this morning. And I know that, um, just hearing what God has done in the life of your brother, the life of your sister, and the life of your neighbor is able to ignite something in you, right? Just to remind you that God is in the neighborhood and God is still in the business of doing amazing things. So let's share a few testimonies. Someone says, I can't keep calm. Someone say, hallelujah. I can't keep calm. After two years of posting on Twitter, I finally made my first sale last week. Praise the Lord. After days of posting, getting tired of posting, and trusting God that I will sell every other day I post on that channel, God did it. I believed everything prophesied by Pastor Debo last Wednesday with all of my heart, and I declared on Ignite that day, 
that I'm taking over all social media channels. And I went ahead to list it. Hi, this God that never fails showed up at 9.55, just over, over an hour after ignite. I'm here to give him all the praise. I'm here to worship with all my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for this good thing that you have begun. Thank you, my father. Are you giving God thanks along with our sister this morning? She's declaring that God is good. God is faithful. And we join with her to say, thank you, father. Thank you, father. We give you praise, Jesus. Thank you. Indeed, when God turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like those that dreamed. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. Hallelujah. Is your mouth filled with laughter this morning? Praise the Lord. Another testimony. Two weeks ago today, just before our fast forward, our fast forward um, prayer and fasting event ended, God blessed me with my unusual elevation in a brand new car. Thank you, Jesus. I got a call from my brother that an elderly family friend was planning to give me a car at the end of the day. I hung up in disbelief, especially as I've been searching for a car for months without success. And I'd all but given up. As surely as God would have it, I got the call later that afternoon and went to meet this family friend who handed me the keys to a brand new car. Someone say brand new, hallelujah. I was totally shocked at the sudden turn of events and I couldn't believe this was happening. Even days after I'd received the car, he was still dreaming. Hallelujah. When God turned again, the captivity of Zion. Hallelujah. Indeed, we serve a living God who sees and meets our needs, making all things beautiful in its time. Thank you, God. Is someone giving God thanks with our brother today? God is good. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone is releasing a word of prophecy. She said this prophecy went out last week. The cart is full and checked out. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And I know no lack because I bring forth my fruit in my season. And my season is now. Is someone appropriating that prophecy for themselves? Appropriate that prophecy. Come on, appropriate it. Take a hold of it and let it continue to bring forth over you in Jesus' name. Someone else is testifying. I'm grateful to God for his grace and mercy to see another day. It's my birthday today and I'm so thankful for good health, his provisions, his protection, and his guidance. I'm thankful to God as well for getting a good accommodation. I know for sure that my prayer request for 2023 will come to fruition. Thank you, Jesus. I am grateful. We say a big happy birthday to you. And for everyone who has a birthday in this season, we extend a happy birthday to you. We ask that God will give you a special birthday present, that his hand will be upon you, that his grace and his goodness will be upon you all through this year in the name of Jesus. We speak a blessing upon you. And we declare that God will continue to make you to shine, to arise, to shine. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen and amen. I'm grateful to God for my testimony at work with salary increase, promotion at work with salary increase. Praise the Lord. My last promotion was six months ago, so I wasn't expecting it as you have to be at least one year in a position before they can even think of promoting you. And in some cases, it can be even longer before you are promoted. But God did it. Barely six months into my last promotion, I got promoted again. Someone said double, double. Ah, my testimony is double. Can you declare it over yourself? War a good warfare, double. I received double. This person has come with a testimony. Six months after their last promotion, another promotion. God will break protocols for your sake. God will break protocols designed to exclude you. He will break protocols for your sake in Jesus' name. He says, I've come, he says, I've come to return the glory to God. Father, we give you the glory for this exceedingly great and precious testimony. We give you honor. Yesterday, God came through on our project.
We've been going in circles for months now and an impromptu meeting with the project sponsor yesterday was set up. Following the presentation, we got an encouraging feedback and a sign off on an important deliverable. I want to thank God for this step forward and I pray that he will hold us strong till the end of the project and help us to see it to a speedy conclusion. Thank you, Baba. We give you praise. Someone is giving a testimony of admission into a university in the USA. It came in handy last night. Said, I'm expecting their funding decision, but God is still doing other things on my list. We give God praise. And we also pray that the God who has brought this admission testimony to you, he will help you as always to speed up every transaction that has been delayed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Is someone giving God thanks for these amazing testimonies? Only a God like you can do these things, Father, and we give you praise. Now, a number of people have shared with us some prayer points, if their prayer burdens, and I'd like us to join with them, if that's all right. Can we exchange Can we exchange strength this morning, receive the strength of the Lord to intercede on the behalf of our brothers and sisters? As I read out their prayer points, I want you to please go ahead and lift up these prayer points along with me today in Jesus' name. Thank you for praying. Thank you for praying. Thank you for praying along. Someone is asking, please pray for my daughter who turns 13 today. Father, we thank you for this precious daughter. We declare over her, Father Lord, she increases in grace. She increases in every measure of stature. She increases in wisdom and she increases, Father Lord, in her relationship with you. Thank you, Father, for every birthday today. We give you honor and praise. Someone says, please pray with me that all of my colleagues that were laid off from work yesterday will find favor as they search for new opportunities. Please, can you pray along? This person has come with a burden for their colleagues who were laid off from work yesterday, that they will find an opportunity. They will find a good job. They will find a means, right, of, of, or, you know, of, of work. That this, that this will not be an end for them. It may just be a bend into bigger levels, into greater things in the name of Jesus. They will not be discouraged. They will not dash their foot against a stone, but God will give them even more, even better, a better promise of things to come in Jesus' name. They're also praying that their colleagues' surgery this morning will be successful and without complications. Father, for everyone who has come with a burden concerning healing, a health situation, whether going into a surgery or perhaps they're trusting you for healing concerning a particular thing, mighty God. Today, we just sow the seed of prayer. We declare concerning them that infirmity is bound and that they are made whole in the name of Jesus. For everyone going into the hospital, going in for a surgery, we declare, Father Lord, that your wisdom will super, be superimposed upon the wisdom of the doctors. Ah, that, that they will go out, they will go into the surgery and come out with a shout of victory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for good success in the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing and strength in the name of Jesus. For everyone who is critically sick this morning, we pray, Jehovah Rapha, Lord, you will be revealed to them in the place of their, of their infirmity in the name of Jesus. Thank you for a strengthening in the name of Jesus. Someone is asking, please, that God should chart the course of my life. Someone is asking, I don't want to do it my own way. I want God to direct my life. Father, we ask that you will direct the course of that person's life. For everyone trusting you, oh God, for a financial miracle. Someone is asking that their deals this week will be closed. Things have been slowed, they said, and the deadline is approaching. Father, we receive speed for everyone, grace and speed, favor for everyone who is trusting you for a business project, for a completion. Ah, in the name of Jesus, we receive your grace. We receive your goodness. We receive your help in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for these prayer burdens and even for many more, Lord, that have been placed here, Father, Lord, on YouTube, in Zoom, Father, Lord, on MixLR. Father, Lord, we ask for that person who is trusting you for interview success, for grace to settle bills and to finish projects. Mighty God, today we receive. Someone is asking for healing for their son. 
canceling surgery in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we receive it. Ah, another child is 12 today. Father, Lord, we ask your hand will be upon our children. The grace and the goodness of God will appear to our children in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting you for new opportunities. Mighty God, we receive it. We receive it. Favor on every side favor on every side for everyone who is connecting with any testimony that has been shared on this altar today father we ask lord you will cause an ignition to occur multiply that same grace multiply that same testimony in the midst of us and let us return with a shout of praise praise god praise god from whom all blessings flow we give you honor and praise today in jesus name Amen and amen. Come on, someone. Can you give God glory and praise? Father, we exalt you. We bless you. We honor you today. Thank you, Lord, because we are assured that you hear the petitions of our hearts. And as you hear our petitions, God, we know that you deliver to us a speedy response. So we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. You made it. You did it. You prayed, you were ignited, hallelujah. I celebrate you for this time that you've spent with God this morning. And I pray that you will see manifest evidence of God's presence with you all through your day. You won't know why, you will just, you will just break out in a song because you, you know that God is on the matter. As you give those burdens to God, you know that you are trading in that burden for joy for peace. The peace of the Lord will garrison you. It will surround you. It will guard your heart and it will guard your mind in Jesus' mighty name. Have a fantastic day today. If you're um, at already at Exponential, hallelujah, we're going to have an amazing time in God's presence today. Um, wherever you're joining from near and far, I want you to expect that God will meet you in the course of your day and that he will cause you to see his faithfulness, his goodness, and his love. In Jesus' much less name we pray. Amen. We like to declare from Psalm 1, 1 verse 1, 2, and 3, and we declare it as a prophecy. I want you to do warfare this morning by reason of those words that we declare, all right? If you're ready, let's go ahead. Psalm 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. Blessed am I, for I walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but my delight is in the word of the Lord and in God's word I meditate day and night. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I bring forth my fruit in my season. My leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever I do prospers. Go forth and prosper in Jesus' matchless name. God bless you. I love you. Have a beautiful day.